Hills today, and it's an age-old story um, that is very familiar, but one that's just really hard to get a hold of. We all know the famous passage from Paul and 1 Corinthians and talking about the church as a body working together. Um, I really love the way um, that the message version um, put this together for us to hear something that we know and understand in a new way to help capture us again. Um, but the Incredibles movie opens with things falling apart in terms of people not being able to use their gifts, right? Like all the supers have to go into hiding because of the lawsuits that are coming against them. And, and they can't live into the fullness of their gifts. And we see the family really struggling with what happens when you can't be who you are and who you are created to be. And we all know what it feels like to be confined, whether that's by an injustice that's a part of our culture and how we view one another, whether that's um, because of an accident that's happened, whether it's just a bad work environment and an awful boss, or whether that's broken relationships and family or with friends and community. We all at some point, unfortunately, have the experience of being trapped and confined and life just not working. So I think the good news that we can all take away is even superpowers don't help dinners <laughs> and family conflicts. Um, 
So this is something that we laugh at because it's a scene that we all know. Um, how we're all trying to make a difference and want other people to try to make a difference um, and how nothing that we do seems to shift to do any help. So how do we figure this out? How do we work together as members together instead of against each other, egging each other on and, and lost in our own worlds, missing this world? And how do we figure out our place? I mean, Violet asked that question, right? Like, I don't want to, I want to be normal. I want to fit in. I want to have a place where I belong. So how do we help each other find that belonging and find that sweet spot of being in the right place at the right time for the right reasons? And as we keep going, there's um, a neighborhood boy um, on a tyke that witnesses all of this um, and articulates, I think, what a lot of us feel. for I don't know something amazing I guess I'm waiting for something amazing I want something amazing to happen I want something to bust us out of like the treadmill that we're on of things not working and of being stuck and that happens for the Incredibles but it happens when as Aiden was talking they find their spiritual fruit right they go searching and each of them has a gift but there's also something that each of them has to work on in order for that gift to be working with others. If you remember back to the message, it talks about how our part only means anything if we see it as part of something greater, as we see it in connection with others. And that a body isn't one part, right, but many working together, because if it was just one gigantic part, that'd be a monster. And so how do we both love our part and figure out how it works with other pieces, other people's parts? And so when you're Mr. Incredible, just remembering the old days, the glory days, when everything was fine, um, there's some patience that's needed to be learned um, to be present at the table longer instead of just going back away from the table into that kitchen um, into his own world, trying to find out what was going on with the other supers, right? When Elastigirl's like, it's time to engage, please be present. So how does he find patience to be able to live in different space? Um, and then Elastigirl, right? She's kind of the only one that's holding everything together and seems to be making it and dealing with the bad situation. But then when she finds out Mr. Incredible is off on another job, has quit his job without telling her. She's a complete meltdown. And Edna, no kips Edna, comes and whips her into shape. And she said, what are you going to do? What do you mean, what are you going to do? You're a laster girl. You will remember who you are, and you will remind him who you are. And you'll pull yourself together. And, and so how do we love ourselves enough to know our power, to not give it away to the point where we don't even see it anymore or see that we're a part that's worthy to be a part of the whole? Right? And then Violet's in a similar situation with needing peace about being different and liking being different versus Dash. He's all over being different. He loves it. He's totally on that. But some self-control in that difference in terms of giving room for other people's parts and, and gifts and abilities is important for him. And so as they each have their own crisis that they're moving through, but they do it and they find out something amazing of what can happen when they're all parts of a whole.
So that's the villain, of course, Syndrome. But the Incredibles did it. That's a really different scene than the dinner scene, right? Something amazing happened because they put in the time to find out and value not only who they were, but also what they were a part of. And so here's the ending scene and how it all comes together. Okay, one, who wants to be the person that can say, look at me, it's all right, everything's all right when everything is exploding around you, right? To have that kind of depth, to have that kind of center of like, oh no, we got this, it's okay. And then it explodes and can be like, oh yeah, you know, day in the life, Not, no big deal. But yet it is a big deal, right? Boy on the trike knows it's a big deal. That was totally wicked, right? Like, I want that moment. I want to be able to see something totally wicked and to know that when things are exploding, they can also be okay. And there are people who can deal with it and keep going because they're a part of something. We've lost a little bit of that, and I would love to have that back as the church. I would love for us here at Epworth and around the world to be so working together and so connected that a moment of crisis comes and we're able to say, it's okay. Look to Christ. Look to those following Christ. It's okay. It's all right. And then for the world watching to see that and for the world's response to be, that was totally wicked. I want that. There's a witness that comes when we are all working together, when we all know who we are and know the gifts the Spirit has given us and love those gifts and love who we are and love what we are a part of. And so I hope that we can discover together those gifts that we bring here to this family and to what we can accomplish together, what God has for us in this unique combination of gifts, what we can do that no one else can so that somebody driving by Warren Road out there can look up and be like, that's totally wicked. And so our discipleship commitment this week is to do some internal reflecting and work. Um, do you know how God has made you and what gift God has given you? Um, do you know how you're different or how things just come naturally and, and that's something that you've got that others struggle with? Do you love that gift? Do you love that way that you're made? And then are you merging it with others? Are you putting it in partnership? with other gifts and with other people around you? Or are you tucking it away? Or even worse, are you hoarding it just for yourself? And so doing some internal work of finding the spiritual fruit that we need that will connect us with those around us so that we can all do something totally wicked together. And again, that's vernacular. I'm not meaning evil wicked. Baptismal vows, we will combat the forces of powers of evil and the spiritual forces of wickedness, but wicked as in completely amazing, mind-blowing, eye-opening, oh my gosh, that's different and I want it. And so may we be that source of inspiration and of exuberance this coming week as we live our lives together as the body of Christ.